Well, welcome back to Wright and Rustic Woodworking, and more importantly, welcome back to my good friend's home. This week, the project's going to be a double barn door that's going to span across these two headers. Well, a lot of these manufactured homes had half walls on either side, and we're going to incorporate an engineered reinforced metal beam at the top to support the weight of those doors. Let's take a look. Okay, 24 pieces of lumber, one by six by eight feet long SPF. Job only calls for 20 pieces, but having the extra four will really prove valuable because I find when I'm in the store, I don't actually get the best look at the edges of these wood until I get home. So whatever we don't need, I can always return. So uh, let's start the milling process and get going. I think it's extremely important to push your sleeves up when working with any turning blades such as the joiner or table saw. Here I have three piles of wood. The far left I'm going to pass through the jointer for the edges. The middle will be the table saw only and the right hand side is extra. This is to show that you can achieve the same quality with both joiner and just table saw. I think one of the more important things we can do in our shop is to change blades often for the proper application. This is the one cut that creates the most dust when you're taking the edge off a board. Even with upper and lower cabinet dust collection, it still seems to produce quite a pile of dust. Okay, well, now that I've got both sides cleaned up, either by jointer on this pile or table saw on this pile, now it's time to biscuit joint all the connections, and those aren't for strength, that's a common misconception. Those are actually to align the boards on the door so that they don't move during the glue-up stage. So I'll move on to that now. A biscuit joiner is not a tool that gets used often, but boy is it the perfect tool for specific jobs. Here I figured I'd give it a little spray out, and yeah, right in the face. I suppose as the videos roll along, sooner or later you'll all realize that I do like to joke around quite a bit. Always a very good idea to test your cut before you start. I have it set here to 5 16 steps. That'll be perfect for what we're looking for. Here's an important step we can all follow, folks. Uh, this is not a dining room table, so it doesn't have to be dead flat. But before I dig out all my biscuits, uh, it's important to see how the boards align with one another. You might want to move this board over here or this board over here or flip it. It's not going to matter. Um, at the end, we will do the test to see which door performed better, the one that I did with the jointer or strictly on the table saw. And that's just meant to show that you don't need every tool that's out on the market to get a good finished product. 
these doors are meant to be rustic, uh, so we don't have to have it absolutely perfect. But there are some big differences here by about, you know, an eighth of an inch, or three sixteenths of an inch. So we want to try to knock those down a little bit. For everyone that tuned in for my last project of the rotating cabinet scene here, thank you so much for your support. I wanted to add that most times I find I'm actually leaving it pulled forward and just turning it around as you see. The only time that it actually has to go back is when I'm going to do miter cuts. As always, I start with a sketch of what the doors and the assembly will look like. That's the finished product you can see here. But more concerning atop is the engineered heading that I joked about earlier, me being the engineer, which as we know is not true, but nonetheless, it took some thought. Here you can see an exploded view, and I'll zoom in so we can take a look. The front black part will be a inch and a half by inch and a half square metal tubing with a one eighth wall which will sit atop a 2x4 stringer. Well, I have no idea how I'm moving this by myself. Well, that's because you're just getting up now. I've been out here all morning, man. Let's go. I know I had mentioned that uh, an old gift card or credit card is the ultimate glue spreader, but uh, the odd time you do want to get down in trickier spaces and uh, they sell these glue brushes but this particular one is just a barbecue sauce brush from the dollar store and uh, as long as you clean it out in some water afterwards there's no need to spend the money on these big products if you leave it and you try to rip it off it will pull off the little tassels but uh, just clean it out with some water and save yourself some money Well, one thing's for sure. If this project doesn't work out, Wright and Rustic's gonna have some awesome parties. So the doors are all glued up, and today we're actually going to uh, flatten out some of those edges. So just another cool tip is that if ever you have old car mats, or you get a new car and you wanna replace them, keep the old ones. The rubber on the back side, so it helps stick on the surface, 
and it's wonderful for protecting your workbench or laying out anything like we're going to do here now. Okay, so it's time to take care of the glue seams on this uh, door panel. Now I've got six different options laid out that we're going to uh, test and see which one works best. Beginning from least evasive to most, or maybe more efficient. First one's going to be a simple card scraper, which has a lot of pliability to it. And uh, it has a lot of control in your hands when you're doing it. And the second one will just be a paint scraper with a reverse motion will pull the glue away. Third is a chisel, and I like to use an old shop chisel. This is something that's not incredibly sharp on the end, but still a little bit sharp. Uh, and if it was really sharp, you might run the risk of driving into this softwood and removing a good sized chunk. So we'll just use a, one that's a little bit dull. The next option is a simple hand plane to run across the full length of the table if we have any high marks. Uh, of course, the orbital palm sander or sander of your choice, this will be required no matter what to sand the entire table when we're done. We're also going to try it on the actual glue lines themselves. Last option will be an electric hand plane on the lowest setting. We'll do several passes of a glue line and find out which works best. Okay, well all these products are great and it's nice to have them all on hand, but ultimately I think what I will likely do is go with the paint scraper as it seems to be the most control for the uh, glue seams. If I need to knock down anything, I'll probably go with my hand plane, the reason these have been around for hundreds of years, uh, or maybe the electric if it's a little bit of a high spot, but not going for a dead flat panel, so I'll get to work on that and finish everything off with the sander. Okay, so now I'm going to put my cross brace board, which also gives us a really nice look of a burn door, uh, onto the panel. And this will be glued down in place with a construction adhesive once again, or panel adhesive, whatever you have. And then I'm actually going to countersink screws all along this just to make sure that nothing ever comes out. So uh, let's take a look at that. We want this board to fit as snug as possible in here. So I scribe a little line and I'll bring my corner over to touch it. And then after that, I can come around and actually mark my straight line. Better to leave it a little bit long if you have to. And that way there we can always trim some off afterwards. Okay, with the adhesive on, I'm going to lock this down with some screws, but we're going to have our plugs in our screws, so we should try to make it at least look good. So I want the screw heads to come straight across, uh, level with the eye plane. Uh, so this is a 65 degree angle, so I know that uh, 25 degrees will bring me exactly uh, flat on the framing square. So I'll mark those now. Next, I'll use a 3 8 Fostner bit, which is the exact size of my wood plugs, to pre-drill all these holes before placing the screws inside. Now I'm going to drive 3 quarter inch number 8 screws through the cross brace board into the back panel. Uh, I'm going to bring you in closer for a camera angle to watch how that wood gets sucked down by slowly drilling the screw in. And that's a really important uh, step to not just hammer it home because you want to bring those two pieces of wood together. Okay, so this panel's almost done. I'll cut off the top overhang as well as the bottom overhang 
And then I've left the sides half an inch proud because I'm going to trim this whole thing in pine to give it a nice smooth edge to all the cutoffs. I'll complete the second door to match this one and then uh, we'll get moving on that header. So see you soon. With the square tubing fully painted and dried, it's now time to place it inside the header. This will take a few tricky cuts on the table saw, finished by the hand saw. A little bit more construction adhesive will help me connect the two pieces of the header together, essentially locking the piece of square tubing in place. From here, I'll flip the entire header over and affix the square tubing to the bottom wooden plate with a couple of self-tapping screws. Whenever you order online, please make sure to take out all your hardware ahead of your project and have a good look through everything and read the instructions, just to make sure that everything's going to fit exactly the way that you planned and also that everything is included. Had I not have actually built barn doors before, I would recommend buying your hardware first and basing your project around that to ensure a proper fit. Here I'm applying some edge banding which I've made off camera. I like to slide the edge banding back and forth a little bit to make sure that there's no joints that are starved of glue. A couple of brad nails will hold everything in place. Clean up the glue with a bit of spray bottle and water and you're good to go. Okay, a little break from the manufacturing process and time to install that header that I made to make sure that there's no issues at the customer's home. I think the electrical here will be okay, but it's important to remove anything else that will obstruct the doors when they're opening. And now it's just on to the final staining process. Not actually sure if this helps, but I've been using a small paintbrush to fill knots and cracks beforehand. Here I am just preparing some final angled cuts on the header. Once this is done, I'll apply my favorite product, which is an Osmo Polywax. Small but mighty, I'll load up my little trailer and take these doors to their new home at my friend's. Luckily, she doesn't live too far away. Well, all right, I had been waiting for this day for some time, the final installation day. Let's hope it all comes together great. Unfortunately, on this next part right here, I had to add a transition strip. Uh, I didn't get my gap quite perfect, so I just wanted to have a little seal in between the doors. Add some handles and we're gonna call this thing good. Okay, a couple touch-up spots and I hope you guys enjoy the big reveal.
Well, there we go. You've watched me create two double barn doors where there was really no place to do it. I created a header over top out of the space that wasn't there. And we did two doors, one through the table saw and one through the jointer. And when you go up close, you really can't see any difference. My only big takeaway from this project would be if someone was looking for a real premium quality product, then perhaps you may want to use a hardwood. Uh, these are a budget door, so these are soft wood. So the wood may not be entirely a 100% stable. So over time, they may move a little bit, but for the application that we're looking for and what the client's needs were, this fits perfect. I want to thank everybody for joining and uh, follow me along. And just remember, if you really want to do something, just go out and do it. Just one more quick note to all my subscribers. I am going to try to fit one more video before Christmas. But if I don't get it done or if I don't see you, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you and your family.